Hi friends, today we will discuss about insulin skeletogogues. First a disclaimer, this video is made for educational purpose only. There is no endorsement for any brand or company. Insulin skeletogogues, these are the drugs which increase the insulin secretion from beta cells of the pancreas and these skeletogogues are divided into two categories sulfonyl urease and non-sulfonyl urease among the non-sulfonyl urease we have megalitidinides sulfonyl urease are further categorized into short acting and long acting and they are also categorized as first generation second generation and third, third generation sulfonyl urease first generation sulfonyl urease they are not used nowadays because they were very long acting they had very high risk of hypoglycemia and there was increased cardiovascular risk associated with their use and among the first generation we had chlorpropamide tolbutamide and tolazamide these drugs are not used nowadays for diabetes among the second generation sulfonyl urease we have glibenclamide also called gliburide and glimipride and third generation sulfonyl urease are glipizide and glycolazide we will take these sulfonyl urease one by one before uh, going to each one of them what how do how do sulfonyl urease act they basically increase the insulin release and this insulin insulin release is glucose independent they basically block atp dependent potassium channels in beta cells of the pancreas and cause release of insulin in two phases first phase is the release of insulin and second phase is the synthesis of insulin so they act in the patients only when they have sufficient reserve of pancreas they initially cause the release of insulin and secondly they also cause the synthesis of insulin they also decrease the hepatic glucose output and they are one of the most potent anti-diabetic drugs first of all we, we will take up glibenclamide it is known as gliburide in USA and basically it is a micronized formulation of glibenclamide it is very cheap and potent longest acting sulfonyl urease the duration of action of glibenclamide is 24 to 48 hours and if the patient has a renal impairment then the, its action may last for 48 to 72 hours it has high risk of hypoglycemia its dose ranges from 2.5 mg to 20 mg it is taken with meals we have to avoid it in elderly because of risk of hypoglycemia the brands of the glibenclamide which are available in the market they are Dionyl, Diabeta, Glynase second is the glimipiride it is also a long acting sulfonyl urease drug it acts very rapidly it controls very quickly the blood glucose the duration of action is 12 to 24 hours with the use of glimipride a patient usually gets, gets lesser weight gain as compared to other sulfonyl urease sulfonyl urease causes about 3.5 kg increase in weight but among sulfonyl urease a glimipride has the least effect on weight gain its absorption is not affected by the food daily dose of uh, glimipride is 0.5 to 8 milligram it has to be taken with meal the various brands of glimipride are amaryl glimistar glimmy etc second is the third is the sorry glycolazide it is one of the best sulfonyl ureas it is very effective in elderly its absorption is not affected by the food a risk of hypoglycemia is very less in elderly so it is uh, very commonly used in elderly and uh, 
among sulfonyl ureas it has the lowest weight weight gain effect it has two preparations immediate release preparation and extended release preparations the immediate release preparation they come in the dose of 40 to 320 mg they are short acting and immediate and release to the immediate release of the drug they are given as a bd dosage duration of action is 12 to 24 hour like 40 mg bd 80 mg bd or 160 mg bd extended release preparation of glycolazides they come in a dose of 30 to 120 mg they are long acting duration of action is 18 to 24 hours and these are given as a od doses that is once a day that is 30 mg od or we can say 120 mg od the 30 mg od dose of extended release glycolazide works same as 40 mg bd of immediate release preparations it has to be taken with meal additional favorable influence of glycolazide is on platelet aggregation and fibrinolysis the brand name of glycolazides are dimsiron glidex next is the glipizide it is very safe as compared to other sulfonyl ureas in mild to moderate kidney failure its absorption is delayed by food so it has to be taken before meal dose is 5 to 30 mg brand name of glipizides are glucotrol glucotrol xl glipicare so as we discussed various sulfonyl ureas the this table depicts their dose range duration of action their elimination like glibenclamide as we know also called gliburide dose range is 1.25 to 1.5 mg duration of action 12 to 24 hours it is mainly eliminated in bile it is very cheap and effective patient has a high risk of hypoglycemia so we have to avoid it in elderly and in patients with renal failure the dose of glimepiride is 1 to 8 mg duration of action 12 to 24 hour it is also excreted in the urine rapid and prolonged action is seen with glimepiride it causes lesser weight gain and is a cardio safe drug glycolazides as we know comes in immediate release and extended release among the immediate release we have the dose of 40 to 320 mg duration of action 12 to 20 hours it is eliminated in urine it is a sulfonyl urease with lowest weight weight gain and it has a additional favorable influence on the platelet aggregation and fibrinolysis glycolazide xr the dose range 30 to 120 mg duration of action 18 to 24 elimination half life is 60% in the urine it has a very high efficacy single daily dosing is there and it also causes lesser hypoglycemia so it is safe in elderly next is the glipizide dose range 2.5 to 30 duration of action is 6 to 60 hour short duration of action excreted in the urine it has a shorter duration and multiple dosing is required it controls post prandial blood glucose effectively it can be used in mild to moderate renal failure glipizide is only the is only sulfonyl ureas which can be used in mild to moderate renal failure and it has a better control of post prandial blood glucose so sulfonyl ureas they are high, highly effective they are comparatively cheaper they are next to insulin in achieving a good glycemic control but 5 to 10% of the patient who are on sulfonyl ureas they show primary and secondary failure as we know the sulfonyl ureas they act on the beta cells of the pancreas and in patient with type 2 diabetes mellitus if their pancreas is not secreting insulin or their beta cells are not functioning properly then such patient they develop failure to sulfonyl ureas means as we know sulfonyl ureas act on beta cell and if in such patients there are 
no beta cells in the pancreas there will be no site for sulfonylureas to act so sulfonylureas shows primary failure in type 2 diabetes mellitus patient especially when the patient is very thin and thin diabetic patient similarly the patients who initially responds to sulfonylureas they also show secondary failure in later stages of life because of loss of beta cell function or loss of beta cells and that failure rate is also again 5 to 10 percent so sulfonylureas they don't have any effect on beta cell preservation they act on the patients whose pancreas is functioning and their beta cells are functioning and they are releasing insulin then only sulfonylureas will act if the patients pancreas is non functional and not able to secrete insulin the beta cells are destroyed then sulfonylureas don't have any effect in such patients so because of lack of beta cell preservation function of sulfonylureas and failure rate among type 2 diabetes patients they are losing the popularity nowadays and as per american diabetic association fresh updates their position is getting lower ranking in the use as a first or second line drug means they are not being used as a first or second line drugs for glycemic control because they don't have a beta cell preservation function and they also have a failure rates among the type 2 diabetes patients but they achieve good glycemic control so they can be used in patients where the cost is not a major issue and also in patient who don't have any established cardiovascular risk or disease or any chronic kidney disease in these two conditions where the patient is poor or uh, the cost is a major issue we can prescribe them sulfonylureas and also in the patients who don't have any kidney disease heart disease we can also prescribe sulfonylureas there for effective glycemic control side effects side effects of uh, sulfonylureas are hypoglycemia hypoglycemia can present as a dizziness confusion sweating tachycardia palpitation they also cause weight gain by 3.5 kg gi upset is seen and first generation sulf uh, sulfonylureas which were initially used they have increased risk of increased risk of cardiovascular mortality and these first generation medicines are not used nowadays dose adjustment of sulfonylureas is done as per the table for example glibenclamide we start with 2.5 mg in the morning in week first in at week 3 we increase the dose to 5 mg in the morning at week 5 we start with morning evening dose of 5 mg at week 7 we give 10 mg and 5 mg at week 9 we give 10 mg in the morning and 10 mg in the evening similarly for glipizide at first week we start with the 5 mg in the morning 10 mg at the third week in the morning 15 mg morning in at the five uh, week five and by seventh week we increase the dose 10 mg in the morning 10 mg in the evening and it week nine we give dose of 20 mg morning and 20 mg evening similarly for glycolyzide when we can increase the dose from week one to week nine as 40 80 One twenty in the morning, eighty eighty, eighty morning, eighty evening. By the week seven and by week nine, we can give one sixty milligram in the morning and one sixty milligram in the evening. Glimipride can be started at a very low dose of one milligram. By week three, we can increase its dose to two milligram. By week five, we can increase the dose by three milligram in the morning. Week seven, four milligram, and week nine, we can give eight milligram. the clinical clinically effective dose are usually the half of the maximum dose for example the maximum dose of glimipride which we can give is 8 mg but 
the clinically effective dose of glimepiride is it's half that is 4 mg we should give 2 weeks for drug to drug action before increasing the dose of glycon uh, this sulfonyl urease we have to instruct the patient to t- take the drug if the meal to sorry we have to instruct the patient not to take the drug if the meal is skipped because if the meal is skipped and the patient takes the sulfonyl urease he can end up with the hypoglycemia so proper meal timing needs to be maintained to avoid the hypoglycemia and we should avoid sulfonyl urease in patients who have very haphazard meal timing for example in drivers politicians business class workers due to risk of hypoglycemia we should avoid sulfonyl urease in type 1 diabetes mellitus diabetic ketoacidosis chronic kidney disease we can give glimepiride sorry glipizide uh, in mild to moderate kidney diseases we have to avoid sulfonyl urease in chronic hepatic failure pregnancy and lactation in pregnancy and lactation we can give gliburide that is glibenclamide it is safe but its safety has not been yet approved by fda this was about the insulin secretogogues that is sulfonyl urease in my next video i will talk another insulin secretogogues that is meglitinides thank you very much